Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. Here we are again uh, with Black Women Thriving Abroad, and I am really excited every time I get a chance to speak with uh, another fearless woman. And it, it, the list just goes on and on of, of beautiful, young, wonderful women who have just stepped out of their comfort zone, I'm sure, to just live uh, a different life, an extraordinary life. And um, one of those very cool people is with me this morning, uh, Lorena Tatia. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today, Lorena. I'm really anxious to talk with you. Um, I uh, haven't had an opportunity to speak with anyone who's been um, down on that side of, of Asia. So this is gonna be a real treat. So you right now are living in South Korea. How long have you been yes. living there? Um, I've been living in South Korea for over a year now. So I came in August 2019. And you're originally from? I'm originally from New Jersey, USA. And my family, we're of Haitian descent. Um, what town? I, I didn't ask you that before because I'm also from New Jersey. Oh, I'm from I'm from I'm from the inner city of New Jersey, East Orange, New Jersey. Go Boys. ahead, New Jersey so. girl. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm originally from Elizabeth, so uh, I know. There's... Oh, okay, yes. <laughs> we were like neighbors practically. <laughs> so there's a huge uh, yeah. I know there's a huge um, Haitian community in in New Jersey. So I'm I'm really excited. Yes, yes. So so just tell me. Uh, I know you're uh, a young woman. What brought you to South Korea a year ago? Um. So a year ago, I was a senior in college. I was class of 2019, and I had studied English literature in college. And I was considering um, maybe perhaps going to law school. Just trying to figure out what I was going to do with my future. And um, I realized that before I wanted to commit to something like that, commit to such a long-term expense of going to, to law school and having that as a career choice, I realized that I had never lived life on my own. Everything I did in life was always working towards a specific goal. And I had never made a decision for myself. I never got a chance to experience anything for myself. And so the opportunity came up for me to teach abroad and so I thought, you know what? I really like teaching. I really love studying English. Why don't I just share that love that I have for English for people who really want to learn the language? So I thought, you know what? Let me just, I knew a little bit about Korea. Um, the college I went to had a lot of Korean exchange students. So I wasn't completely foreign to the culture, but I just thought, you know what? Let me just make this one rash decision in my life and see where it takes me. This is uh, really fascinating, um, being the child of immigrants, and you and I share yeah. that commonality. And I, I'm noticing that uh, there's a lot of us who are, are uh, first generation or children of immigrants to, to the United States yeah. are kind of just making our way out there. I don't know if it's something in our DNA or something that maybe our parents influence in us, you know, just growing up in a, uh, an immigrant family. Um, but what was it like for your family? Did, were they, you know, uh, were they happy to see you go? Or what was that like, that um, having to deal with family, uh, friends? Um, it took for, because I grew up in a, like a single parent household. So my mother was the one who, who raised us. She made a lot of sacrifices, made sure we went to Catholic school, tried to give us the best that we had considering the area that we grew up in and things like that. And so when I told her, I'm the baby of the family. So when I told her, oh, you know, there's this opportunity for me to, to teach abroad. She was, I, she was heartbroken. But at the same time, she was there because she really, she didn't want me to go, but she didn't want to hold me back either. Because she, did, she was like, you never know what kind of opportunities you will find. But she was scared for me because I never left the country before. I didn't even have a passport at like the time I was applying for um, the teach abroad program. So everything was so new to me. She's like, you've never even left the country even to travel on vacation. And now you're telling me that you're gonna move, you know, so many thousands of miles 
miles away by yourself. You don't know anyone. You don't know how to speak Korean. You're trying to move to this country by yourself. And like, you know, what are you going to do? You're the baby. We we were raised in a very like close, tight-knit family. So it was, it was, it was a challenge. I really had to explain things to her. And it even took some encouragement from my college professors trying to convince my mother to just let go, like loosen the leash just a little bit, you know, let your daughter explore. Because I feel like immigrants, they know the harsh realities of the world and they know the great opportunity that America provides for you. So they're like, we work so hard to get you to, you know, just to get you to have the chance to make a life for yourself in America. And now you're telling us you want to leave. So it was, it was, it was a challenge. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I, I can imagine. Um, it is, uh, you know, a lot of people have said that they, they have that, that stress, you know, from family or pressure, I guess you could call it, you know, your family says, oh my God, or your friends say, oh, you're crazy. And uh, it, it takes a lot of courage. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it, it takes a lot of courage to be able to just, you know, uh, put all of that aside because, you know, you feel like, oh, I'm sure there were moments when you felt like, oh, my God, you know, am I doing the right thing? And it takes a lot of courage yeah. to, to just, you know, get past all of that and just push through and say, that, you know, this is what I got to do. So I really, I really enjoy hearing that, that, you know, you had that, that fearless spirit and when you got to Korea, um, you know, this is your first time leaving the country. Uh, what, how yeah. quickly did you adapt to the culture? Was it like really over the top different or could you just kind of slide right in uh, to, to their culture? Um, when I initially, it was so, it was so scary. I was like, I came, I was 22 just graduated college, didn't know anything about travel or anything like that. And the way the pro program that, that I'm in, the teacher bar program, you don't know anything about where you're going until you just know the province that you're moving to. So I knew that I would be moving to Seoul. I didn't know where I'd be living. I didn't know what grade level I'd be teaching. All of that is told to you when you arrive in the country. So that's really terrifying because you just have no context of what your life will be like. Um, but so before I left, I did a lot of research before I left um, America. I watched a lot of like videos. YouTube was a great source and blogs. YouTube and blogs was probably the greatest source in terms of trying to figure out what life is like as an expat. Um, and I made sure that I at least learned like the Korean alphabet system. So without that knowledge of just knowing like basic key phrases, because the, the language is so different from, from English, it's entirely different. Um, I, had to, I had to at least learn the alphabet system so I can at least be able to read signs and read, you know, just basic reading. Um, that took me a long way, but Korean culture is certainly, certainly different from American culture. And I think that like in, the, in your workplace, I work in a public school system, so I'm the only foreigner in my entire workplace. So just dealing with people not know, like not knowing that language barrier, not being able to communicate um, with your coworkers and things like that, it definitely takes a hard adjustment. And I'm grateful for having the immigrant, like having immigrant family, because I understand what like, like having a duality in terms of culture, but adjusting to the Korean culture, their their culture is a lot more formal than American culture. We're a lot more casual. Than, than the Asian, like Korean and Japanese culture, they're a lot more formal. So I can say that the first few months was definitely rough in terms of adjusting, but once you get used to it and you're open and willing to speak the language and the people are very hospitable, so it's very easy. They're very friendly towards foreigners. So it, that may, it made the adjustment easy in that way. That was actually one of the questions I wanted to ask you next. Uh, being a woman of color in Korea, uh, it, how do they receive you? Um, obviously, there aren't a lot of, uh, of, of folks there. There are some I know that go teaching, but yeah. how yeah. does it feel to be a woman of color when you're walking down the street? Um, do you feel okay? People look at you strange. Um, so, okay, that is definitely different. So being a woman of color, it represents so much in Asia because Asian people don't have exposure to black people whatsoever. 
and their perception of black people is what they see in the media. So what they see, they're very, they, they're very exposed to social media and American media, especially Korea is heavily influenced by American culture. So what they presume black women are like in American media is what they're going to assume that the black woman that they see on the street is like. So this is, I think, the hardest adjustment. It's a bit easier for black men in East, in East Asian cult, like East Asian countries, but for black women, it's, it's a lot more difficult because we're constantly fighting against these stereotypes that are placed upon us. So it's very interesting that way. Um, like I said, Koreans have very little exposure to black people. So when you're walking down the street, you will attract a lot of attention. And this was very difficult for me at first. I was even nervous to like, go to grocery stores or just do like common things because people when they see you they're like and they follow you and they're and, and Asians their idea of personal space is a lot different from American personal space we have this bubble you don't really get too close to people but in Asia because the, the population is so dense everyone's on top of each other so sometimes they'll touch you or like I have braids in my hair now so they'll touch your hair and things like that and to an American, it's very offensive. Like, why are you touching me? Especially our hair, you know, we're very sensitive about that. But to them, they're like, oh, well, you know, you're, you're different. So we're going to touch your hair. And like my students, when, they, when I first met them, they'll touch my skin and they'll say, they have this idea that like African-American skin, like black people's skin is a lot softer. So they say, wow, like your skin is so soft. Like they'll just touch you in that way. And it seems very strange. And we're like, oh, wow, this is so offensive. But their idea of personal space is a lot different but I definitely attract so many stares. Sometimes people try to speak English to me because they know I'm obviously foreign. So they're like, hello, and they, they try. And, it, and like, at this point, I kind of play it off like I'm a celebrity or something. They'll outwave and stuff because the way I attract attention just for walking down the street, it's really crazy. Yeah, I, I can just imagine. What about your students? Um, are they uh, anxious or are they really motivated to learn the language? Yes, I would say for sure. There's such a great importance on the English language in Asian countries because this is how people, this is what distinguishes people in terms of education. So to qualify for a good job or things like that, you need to know English. And so that's why they, they place such importance on teaching children English. And a lot of my students, even outside of class, they go to like English academies after school so they go to like a, a second school outside of like normal school hours just to learn English. So they're very enthusiastic and they always want to know about like American pop culture and music and the, like the, the casual language that we use. They're very eager to, eager to learn. Um, what is one really strange uh, custom the Koreans do that you've had to really, if it's taken, I know you've only been there a year, but can you name one thing that was really difficult for you to get adapted to? I would say maybe one thing was awkward for me in the beginning was they bow. So we're used to like waving or things like that, but they, they bow to each other. So that was a bit strange for me because I'm like, oh, this is quite like awkward. But if you don't bow, then you're disrespecting. And, they, and in Korean culture, there's a lot of importance placed on age. So even if someone is one year older than you, the way you would address them and the honorifics in the language changes. So age is so important. You wouldn't speak to someone, even sometimes, even if they're a few months older than you, you wouldn't refer to, you would refer to them as older sister or older brother. It's not very, it's like American language is very different in that way. So that was hard. So when people, anytime I would meet someone, they'd say, how old are you? And I'm like, oh, why does everyone keep asking me my age? But it's because they need to know what, what, what formality to use in terms of the language and even the way people are respected in the workplace and things like that that all it all depends on how old you are and so that was a bit different so it's like you can't really speak your mind if someone who's older than you is in the room because what they say is right and koreans are very yes culture so if the oldest person in the room has this agreement like has this idea even if you don't agree you have to yes 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 so that was tough coming from an american where we we're very opinionated yes. sure sure <laughs> Sure. Um, how long will you be there? Uh, so uh, the intention was one year, but a few months in, I'm like, okay, I'll be renewing for another year. And then now it's been past the, uh, I'm well into my second year contract. 
I'll probably be here for the next few years so far that I can tell. Have you um, been to any other countries uh, while you, uh, since you've been there? Um, so the places that I, I only got to travel to the Philippines since being in Korea, because right when I was able to travel is when coronavirus hit. But I was able to go to Southeast Asia, and that's a way different experience than East Asia. So, um, any advice for any young women? Because you are a uh, recent grad from college, and there will be a lot of women that are going to be thinking about making the decision to to move uh, away from their home country. What advice can you give a young person so now that you've been there and done that? you've had the experience, what would you say to someone that's kind of on the fence or feeling fearful about doing what you've done so beautifully? I would say that if you have the idea or the desire to do something, then you should just go for it. Even if it's scary, even if you feel like you'll fail, rather you go and try and it doesn't work out than for you to always have this regret of what if. So I think that, you know, that's, that's a deeper regret. Rather you have gone and ex had that experience and you didn't like it and you can always go home. But if you will live your life wondering, oh, what if, what if I went to this place? What if I, what if I didn't, you know, go to grad school right away and I wanted to, to travel and do all these sorts of things? You just have to do it. And even if you go to a country like Korea or anywhere, somewhere in Europe, where there's not many people like us, there's not many Black people, you should still go anyway because you are like you are representative of your race and so people look at you as oh this is what black people are like this is what black women are like so it's just don't let that fear of what if or that fear of failure or that fear of rejection stop you from traveling and seeing the world and spreading what you have to offer the world you shouldn't let any of that stop you just go for it i like that um I also wanted to, to go back really quick to something that you said that I wanted to just comment on also. Uh, the fact that many countries that we as people of color go to, the only, in, the only experience that they've had with us is watching TV, the news and whatever they see on the media. So you, you brought up a really good point that, uh, you know, many times we go to, to different countries and we feel that the culture is maybe a bit um, you know, antagonistic, or they're a little bit uh, standoffish. But really, in, in, in reality, it's that they're not accustomed to, to being around us. They don't know what to expect. And it's kind of like a Marvel character, you know, that just jumped out of the TV screen and they're, you know, in the same room with you. You're like, oh my God, now Yeah, what, exactly. <laughs> what exactly. Do I, what do I say? What, um, so I, I, really, uh, I really love the fact that you, you're happy there. What about... Um, Last thing, I'm always thinking of other things to ask you. What about like nightlife? I mean, what, what, uh, mm. what are some of the things to do as a young person there? I would say I live in Seoul, which is like the big city. The nightlife in Korea is unlike any other. It's, it's amazing. And, and the good thing about <laughs> Korea is it's so safe. So you could be the drinking culture is very intense. It's a part of their culture. And so there are people in the middle of the night who just like, they, don't, they can't make it home because they're so, they're so drunk. They'll just lay out in the middle of the street and they'll wake up the next morning fine. Their wallet will be there. Their, all their money will be there. No one will bother them. So Korea is very safe in that way. And their nightlife is just very intense. Young, a lot of young people, like, you know, they like to just visit different clubs. Hip hop culture is very intense in Korea. So they're heavily influenced by hip hop culture. So it's very strange. So when they finally see a black person in the club or in the bar, they're, they're all the Koreans are very excited because that's like their dream come true. <laughs> yeah. They're finally seeing like, like Beyonce in the flesh is how they, that's how they imagine it. But um, Korea is, like I said, very influenced by social media. So Catholic culture is very big here. Just very like Instagrammable places. So young people love coming here, especially to study abroad, because everywhere in the city is very picturesque. So people love it. You have a YouTube channel, right? Yes, I do, yes. And, and what is it about? Do you do stories about Korea or just personal experiences? Uh, what is the name of your channel? So the name of my channel is Lorena Tatia. So it's my name. 
And I started from why I decided to uh, move all the way to South Korea. And so far, I've been just documenting different experiences. I'll go to different places around Korea and vlog those. So I'll kind of show what Korean life is like. Sometimes I share stories. Just my experience in Korea in general, just documenting it by film. Awesome. So I'm going to put a link to, to your YouTube uh, channel in, in uh, below this video. Thank you so much, Lorena. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. And I, my sincere hope is that, uh, you know, there's a young um, woman or even a guy out there that's thinking about, um, you know, doing something different and, and just hearing your words and knowing that, hey, you know, it, it's okay. And especially a place yeah. like Korea, you know, we don't, it, I think it's kind of the same uh, at, from American standpoint, we're not really that familiar with their culture either. So the first thing you're thinking of is, oh, is it like China or, you know, maybe North Korea? It took me a minute to mm, realize yeah. that it's, you know, it's not North Korea, <laughs> it's South Korea. Yes, yeah, South so Korea. I think a lot of people will probably say like, wow, you know, why would I go there? Well, I'm excited for you. All the best in your, in your, uh, in this, you know, new and exciting adventure in your life. And, um, uh, we need to keep in touch and see maybe, you know, down the road, there might be a Korean wedding or. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Lorraine. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.